Hello, everyone. We're in the chambers of the Florida House of Representatives. I'm with Speaker Dean Cannon of Winter Park and Senate President Mike Herodopoulos. Welcome. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to the Florida House. <laughs> Thank you. We're glad to be here. This is the inaugural edition of Mr. Speaker, Mr. President, a series that will run throughout your terms uh, as Speaker and President uh, as a part of your uh, accessibility to the public and we appreciate that being a part of it uh, our cable customers are going to enjoy this so thanks a lot mr. speaker as we sit here in the well of the house uh, tell us about first of all what is the well and what happens here sometimes <laughs> well we're basically in the center of the house chamber it's a it's a it's a, a big octagon and it's where all 120 house members uh, conduct the business of the house and I will just tell you I still get uh, uh, goosebumps sometimes when I come on the floor. The, the first time you're here, you realize, number one, uh, that it's a special place and it's, it's a place where great things can happen or we can, we can miss great opportunities. I'm, I'm optimistic that given the uh, leadership from the governor's office, the leadership from President Herodopoulos, and hopefully myself here in this chamber, we can really get some, some transformative things done this year. Uh, Mr. President, uh, you used to sit in this chamber too. Does this bring back any memories for you? It really does. I love the Florida House. Uh, so I, I like the fact that we're finally as conservative as the Florida House now in the Florida Senate, but it brings back great memories. I have wonderful friends here, my number one friend being Dean Cannon. Uh, we're, we're committed together to turn around this state by offering stability and predictability. I think along with the governor, we have a simple job to make sure that all of the people you see around this chamber, the former speakers of the House can be proud that we're doing the right thing for Florida and we're standing on their shoulders. They provided this with so much opportunity. We want to pass that along to the next generation. You mentioned that you two are friends. And um, of course, the way the process is set up, there's a tug, push, pull between the two houses of the legislature, between the executive branch and, and uh, the, the, the legislative branch. There will be inevitably some disagreements over policy. There should be. How do you two friends see managing the disagreements, Mr. Speaker? I, I will just say this. What's great about the way the Constitution sets up the Senate and the House is that they are different. And there's 40 senators. There's 120 House members. Uh, we have we are intentionally different uh, chambers. We have different people, and Mike and I are different people. But we have a common philosophy. And what's wonderful about the fact that we have a common philosophy and an underlying friendship is when there are disagreements, uh, there's a proverb that says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Hopefully, uh, Mike and the senators make our ideas better uh, and, and make us improve our ideas. And, and as their ideas come over from the Senate, we work to make uh, each other's ideas better. That's, that's what's great is, although we're different people, we may and our chambers may have different approaches, because we've got uh, an underlying friendship and mutual respect for each other, uh, that bodes very, very well. In, in the past, in sort of modern times, uh, even more so than the last time this happened when I think uh, then uh, Speaker Dan Webster and then Senate President Tony Jennings had a great relationship, the fact that he and I uh, respect each other and care about each other as friends, I think will avoid a lot of the unproductive uh, strain that can occur. Instead, make it a, make it a healthy uh, competition to produce better policy and, and, a, and a real positive working relationship. Well, there's a third person who's not here with us right now who will be a major player, and you two will have discussions with him quite a bit, and that's our governor, Rick Scott. Uh, how has uh, the communication been thus far between the three of you? Well, first and foremost, very positive. I think we share the goal of reforming our government, making sure we do more with less. We need to run the government a lot more like a business. But just to add on, on Dean and myself, we're bound by family and faith. We share our faith. Uh, we share with incredible families that back us up every single day and a philosophy that we're all both proud of. We're proud conservatives. We believe that you can do more with less is what businesses and families are doing. Rick Scott has a unique background I think we're all blessed with. That's why he was elected. The expectation that Floridians have is a jobs governor. And I think you have a jobs house and Senate. And candidly, and I want to make sure people understand this, for a long time, the Senate was the graveyard of some really good ideas. And I want to make sure people know that those that is no longer a graveyard. It is one where a conservative ideals of less government, uh, less taxes for that matter, will thrive in the Florida Senate because we recognize it's the government that's sometimes the obstacle in the way to job creation. 
And if we can knock down the barriers, be it lawsuits, uh, high taxes, let alone regulations that Governor Scott, Dean Cannon and I are all committed to knocking down, that we can create more jobs and opportunities. And so the Senate is a much different place than just a few years ago. And I think it has a lot to do with the very building in right now, the, the chamber of the House. A lot of the members from the House have moved over to the Senate and did not give up their values when they made that transformation over to the Senate. Well, you mentioned something uh, that's been very important to Governor Scott when he was a candidate, and that's job creation. Uh, before we get to the budget, which is something that you're going to have to deal with, let's talk about job creation and uh, building a business-friendly environment. You were trying to get to some of that, Mr. President, but um, what can be done here in this chamber and over in the Florida Senate that can create an environment uh, that will actually attract business and create jobs in Florida. We've got still a 12% unemployment rate, a 17 to 18% underemployment rate. What can be done? Either one of you. Well, I'll pick up uh, on the things Mike mentioned. The governor identified what he called the axis of unemployment, taxation, regulation, and litigation. Uh, those are, those are uh, obstacles to the deployment of capital. Probably my underlying rule of economics is uh, capital flows where it's treated the best and taxation, regulation, and litigation abuse that capital. We can create an environment, there are other factors like consumer confidence, the availability of credit, the stability of the regulatory market. Those are other areas where we can reduce those, those obstacles to the deployment of capital and hopefully uh, enhance the attractiveness of capital, especially from other states. Uh, in, in some of our national competitor states like California or New York, uh, they treat capital terribly. We want to be the, the recipients of a better environment, whereas businesses pick up and leave high tax, high regulation states, they want to come to Florida. And that's something that Governor Scott has identified is this should be the number one state for job creation. It should be the easiest and most efficient to, to deploy capital and hire people here. And I think it's a goal we all share. And just to add on that, before Dean and I even took our offices, last January, we held a summit in, in Dean's hometown of Orlando. We want to hear directly from business owners. After the one, they're the ones who create the jobs, not the government. And what they told us more than anything else is they want stability. They want to make sure the government is on their side for a change. We just saw a couple weeks ago where the state of Illinois just raised taxes by 66%. Right now in California, they're raising taxes by $12.5 billion and cutting $12.5 billion out of basic programs. Here in Florida, we've been fiscally responsible, but we can do a lot better. But the best way you turn around this economy is you talk to job creators, not government bureaucrats. That's why we reached out across the state. We've listened, and it was shown last year in our Jobs for Florida program that are paying dividends today. And a lot of the ideas that are going to start in the Florida House will be accepted and embraced in the Florida Senate. Again, I think Dean hit it perfectly. We need to offer stability. And at the end of the day, it's about comparison shopping. California, Illinois, New York, the other mega states have really abused their privileges as leaders in their state. And thus, we offer a very competitive marketplace, and this is still the best place to live. And when we offer this stability, in contrast to Washington for that matter, I believe it will attract businesses, especially with Rick Scott working the phones and Dean Cannon and I doing everything we can to embrace that agenda. You know, there are some people who are seeing the direction of change that, that you're talking about, and they, they fear it. Okay, to some extent. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, when people are talking, when people here talk about simplifying or reducing uh, duplication and permitting to make for a more business friendly environment, they fear, you know, they use terms like uh, paving over the environment, you know, uh, or whatever. Um, and combining agencies, uh, there, there is a fear factor there, the, the fear of the unknown. How would you address some of their fears that, uh, you know, we're going to all of a sudden transform Florida, put into a business friendly environment, but one that hurts our environment, which attracts tourists and that sort of thing. Either one of you want to address that? Uh, I, I would say there's, there's two types of fear. There's, a, there's an understandable and appropriate concern over, over the unknown, and then there's the fear used by the defenders of the status quo, who just don't want to see change because they think that a redundant, inefficient system uh, they're comfortable with it and they want to defend it. Uh, I've got no patience uh, for the latter. I've got some understanding and some respect and we need to hear those concerns of folks who say, uh, as you reduce redundancy, be careful not to reduce the level of protection. And that's what I think Mike and I believe in, in all of the uh, regulatory reforms that we've looked at so far. You can maintain the same level of protection and safeguard, 
but not make five different state agencies look at one topic like stormwater. You know, I'm not an engineer, but stormwater always runs downhill and it pools at the lowest point on the piece of property. You don't need five different government agencies to look at how to put a drainage pond in. And so, and that's the type of thing that takes months and months and months of, again, frustrating the deployment of capital. So I think we need to hear the valid concerns of folks who say, reserve, uh, protect and preserve the level of protection, uh, but I've got, I've got you know, no patience for folks who say, just leave it the way it is because we know that the status quo is unacceptable. Uh, Mr. President, one final, we got about a minute left, uh, one final question on job creation. Um, can you name another initiative that you would like to see undertaken to actually create jobs over the next couple of years? Well, I think the best initiative, again, is that stability angle, and one of those is in the area of tort reform. Uh, right now in our health care system, it is abused. You see the folks are, are a lot of litigation, to put it simply, and we need to make it a more level playing field. For example, if you go to the VA, if you're a veteran, there are certain qualities of standards. FQHE with a federally qualified health care clinic, certain levels of, or standards. Your local Department of Health, all we want to do is make sure that all levels of health care are given those same type of tort measures, meaning it should be a little bit harder for someone to sue another in the state of Florida because it's one of those hidden costs and it prevents great doctors from coming into Florida and it accelerates or increases the cost of health care. And what Dean is talking about, just to add to his point about the redundancies, who takes care of things best when you own it yourself or when you, the government owns it as a group? And I'll, I'll use a simple phrase, it's kind of fun, but it's true. Have you ever washed your rental car? That's <laughs> that, where we're going. On we that want note, it to be, we uh, need to take a ownership. break. Uh, let's come back and talk with Mr. Speaker and Mr. President in just a moment.